Hey guys, it's September 19th today. Um, as you can tell, we are uh, back in the W170 here yet again. It is raining yet again. So, a um, little update. Uh, as you guys know, the D450 was kind of broke down on us and it really doesn't go through wet, rainy canola very well, just because the hole isn't big enough. Uh, I mean, the opening, which is right here, um, from here to here. Um, on the D450, it is around 65 inches wide, I do believe, something like that. And on the Macdon, it is uh, 76 or 80 inches wide. So. If you're in a kind of a bushy crop, like some of this stuff is a little bit on the riper side, but you can still quite see quite a bit of green in it. Um, and if you're in a heavy crop, uh, it just does not want to bunch out that hole on the D450, which is the reason why we are in the W170 right now. It'll pretty much, going back to D450, it'll pretty much shove it out the hole if it's nice and dry, but then you're going to start shelling some of it and stuff. So. We will use it, but it's been raining here, so we actually can't use the D450 even if we wanted to. It's just too much canola, too big of a header, can't shove it out the hole. So we are back here. Um, we've been cruising along, and as you guys know, in the last uh, video, I think it was the last video, if I put that one out, um, we kept plugging up our rotor shears like all the time. And actually, we were on a really heavy field, heavy crop, and we were actually plugging up the header as well. We could not get it out. Um, to be honest, we just really needed a 35 foot head, but we managed to get it done. We're gonna hate our lives when it comes to combining it because we just left so many freaking plugs and dams and big piles all over the place. But anyways, this feels a little bit lighter, a little thinner. Um, and we found something out about the rotor shears that I didn't know. I've never run rotor shears in my entire life. In fact, I've only probably got like 50 hours of actual swathing in of my entire life, so I'm really an, uh, I'm a noob to the swathing world. So I'm trying to learn and figure this out. Uh, Ashton took this thing for a run here uh, yesterday. She uh, she much enjoyed it. Obviously, you know it's the wrong color to her, um, but she likes to get out out and uh, do some swathing. It's one of her favorite things to do. You can hear that rain just pouring outside. So I'm gonna go show you. One of the problems was is we didn't have our uh, stationary knives on, and, I, and it, it didn't even come with stationary knives. So this thing had 180 hours on it uh, from the previous owner. So whether they actually put them on or not, I have no idea. But anyway, we put some stationary knives on, and uh, thanks to my good neighbor uh, Murray um, down by his place here, and uh, he's always bailing me out. You gotta have good neighbors. Neighbors, good neighbors are really important. Let's go out and take a look at these stationary knives. So I guess it's not uncommon for it to rain up here in September and snow in October. But uh, I don't believe we're getting any rain at home at the South Farm. This is just the North Farm thing. And oh yeah, we're back at the North Farm if you didn't know that. We're going to be up here until we're done. Okay, we got to get across. You know what? The end's right there. I'm just going to walk across here. So yeah, this one doesn't have a swath roller, a hydraulic swath roller like the D450. But I would definitely put that on if I kept it. Um, that's a decision I guess I have to make here pretty dang quick. I'm definitely leaning to that. So right here, didn't have any of these stationary knives on, it just had this hunk of steel here. And then it's a perfect, the perfect shape of a section. So my neighbor actually had a couple used sections kicking around with some sunken bolts and we stuck those on. It needs one right up here as well, but we didn't have enough. So we got, I think it takes six. One, two, three, four, five, six, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I don't know why that took so hard, but anyways, so far so good. As you can tell, I don't know I'm a big fan of them, to be quite honest, because 
it shells out the canola. Anything that it touches, it shells it out. And I hate seeing that. So that's an option, obviously. And the other option is put your crop divider back on, which is what I would probably do. But the downside of that is if you have a really raggedy crop, which this one is not, um, <coughs> but the field we come off of, it was just laid freaking flat and we were having a terrible time. And it was dragging on everything. And like, seriously, it was probably only 14 inches off the ground because it was laid flat. Not fun to swath, not fun. Actually just thought about spraying it and uh, straight cutting it. But anyways, we probably still will do some straight cutting, but I definitely want to get some swathing done. Here's the reason why. I know out here that looks ripe. It looks like you could be out there, you know, get combine in here right away, but really it's a long ways away. Uh, when you have this much green in it, a lot of green pods, if you were to open these up, here, I gotta shut this off. There, you see the green seeds? There's actually green seeds in there and you're not allowed to have any green, right? Even if they're black, like these, these are probably okay. They could still roll green, hence green count. You're supposed to, I believe, I believe, start swathing around that, well, uh, some people start as early as 60% seed color change. I actually waited till it was closer to like 80% seed color change. But the only downside is when you get to the 80%, um, you could do more shelling out because it's, you know, it's riper. So that's a downside. Anyways, that's the update. Enough yabba de abadin. Let's go swath. I know I haven't shaved in like forever because I haven't, I haven't taken a day off in like a long time. And I gotta have a day off. Something you gotta mentally prepare for to shave, right? I'm just gonna go across the head this time. Seems quicker. Oh, whoa, as long as you don't slip. Now that we're all wet, hopefully my cap doesn't fog up. Okay. All right, and here we go. GPS keeps switching off and uh, it's so frustrating when that happens. I don't know why I gotta I gotta get someone to come out and take a look at it, I guess. See how green that is? So you can spray it. Oh it did it again. I can still spray this stuff. And then hopefully in about two weeks, it'd be ready to go. I know some people are like, well, you can do it in seven days. You need really good heat and some nice weather in order for that to happen. And it's cold, it's wet. I don't even know if cold and wet, two weeks, you would have that stuff dried down. Swathing it, it kills it. Yes, it's gonna still get wet from the moisture. Um, but heck, it took us, what, two weeks? We. Two, we sprayed that wheat up there, and in about, what, two weeks later, we were combining it, but we were still going around sloughs that were 17, 18, 19, 21% green, so I am not doing that. Mostly because we don't have that much time left to fall. Like, we're already, what, the 19th of whatever, September? We have to wait two more weeks, you're beginning of October, that's like rain and snow season. Oh my word. So these little green bars is uh, basically telling you how hard you're pushing your swather. That's the PSI. The top one is the reel and the rotor shears combined. They're on the same circuit. Uh, if you start plugging your shears, you'll hit that red bar. Red bar means bad. That's when things will start stopping on you. All this canola is leaning east, makes it 
pretty easy to get under and go into uh, heading west, but when you're going east, it is a lot more of a challenge. Gotta get that reel in there just a little bit more. And I can't quite go as fast going east. Oh my word. Anyway, as I was saying, the green bars, uh, that uh, middle one, that 6.4 mile an hour, that is your canvas speed. And the heavier it is on your canvases, the more you can hit that red bar, which means you would probably stole or plug your canvas. And the bottom one is your knife, and that's 1100 RPM, that's your speed. And, oh, wow. Mike, how come you're not mapping? Because the mapping quit too. Yeah, I'm having some issues there with the uh, GPS and guidance, but you know what? Turning it on and off is still better than uh, freehand in 100% of the time. So anyways, as I was saying, if you hit tough cutting, that's your knife, it's hydraulically driven. Um, you can start to uh, run risk of either breaking a knife or just plugging a knife. Then the bottom right there is your height. This is how much uh, tilt you have. And then obviously the other ones are pretty self-explanatory. So, we do have a back windshield wiper. Oh, I think I did more, did not do that, oh, that's not bad. Okay. Oh, that, okay. Traditionally, I'm sitting around that four miles an hour. Sometimes I can do five coming into it, four going with it. Um, Mike, why don't you go north and south, because all where winds typically per, mon per, per you know what I'm trying to say, typically comes out of the west. So you want to try to lay your rows with the wind. Less risk, less, less risk of your swaths blowing away. Swaths blowing away is a real thing. Especially right now, because I think they're fluffier than normal because they're, uh, it's ripe in some of these areas, or riper. It's great to swath in the rain. If you can swath in the rain, I've been told, because I am no swathing pro by any means, that, that is awesome, totally makes sense because everything's it's wet, it's soggy. It, those pods don't split as easy when you hit them. Less shelling. Oh yeah, I also did a, um, a sound test with my app. Held my phone the exact same way in this in this swather as I did the John Deere D450. And remember, this is not a John Deere swather. This is a MacDon swather. It's just MacDon and uh, John Deere are in a partnership when it comes to swathers. And this is a Mac Deere, is basically what the farmers call it. It's MacDon, but has a Deere engine and has Deere guidance and deer paint. Oh, and a deer steering wheel. But everything else is MacDon. And if you wanted to get the red MacDon version, I'm pretty sure I told you this before, but I'll tell you again, uh, you get the Cummins engine, you get the red swather, 
and you don't get any guidance. You gotta put your own aftermarket guidance in or whatever you wanna do. Well, I like the John Deere guidance, so it just makes sense to go with the John Deere. And also that is a Mac Don head. It is not a John Deere head. You know how well the John Deere head is working because it's on my John Deere D450. And that John Deere D450, that is an actual John Deere Swather, okay? That is not Mac Don, that's a John Deere. It's just like a 2013 model, that's all. They have since updated and have uh, the same cab as on the S-Series Combines, I believe, on the new John Deere Swathers, which we can't really buy up here unless you want to put one on a mower. I know, I know. It's, this is John Deere and Mac Don entered into a partnership, so if you want a green swather, you're getting a Mac Don. That's just how it is. Although, uh, some of the cool features that I really do like about the uh, Mac Don, other than that it has a wide opening, but the case swathers, it should mention, my father-in-law has case swathers with honeybee heads. Um, again, Honeybee and Case at the time, I think it's 2012, 2014. At that time, too, also had a partnership. I don't know if they still have it anymore, where they would put heads on the Case and New Holland self-propelled swathers. So, uh, they also have, the Honeybee also has a very wide opening. If it's not 76 inches, it's right, right there. So, uh, it's just the John Deere, to my knowledge. It has one of the smaller openings so yeah I can't remember if I said that or not but the state oh my goodness the stationary knives make a pretty big difference <laughs> of course they would oh boy oh boy oh boy one hand here one hand on a swather just trying to get this little nook there we go without running in the rotor shears into my other swath success I do like how fast the table is in auto. It's just, whoo, whoo, it's very quick. I like that. I like that the buttons are lit up at night on the joystick. Oh yeah, I was telling you how quiet this thing was and I got sidetracked, didn't I? Yes, so, uh, oh, that's a rock pile. Sorry about that. So anyways, we're gonna get this. The D450 John Deere has a decibel level of 76.7. So 76.7, that is quite loud. Um, and the W170 is 67.6, okay? 67.6, I can't remember what I said the tractors were, but we are in the same realm as the four wheel drive tractors. John Deere Swath or D450 is quite loud. Also, it should be noted though that the D450 is revving at about 2500 RPMs, which is the same 6.8 liter engine, John Deere engine, that is in my generator. Also, I believe it to be the same engine that you can get in some of the front wheel assist, older ones, 7220s and uh, 7320 John Deere front wheel assist, like what we had. And this, we have on eco mode, and we are revving at 1780 RPM, which is actually the lowest that you can rev or set it to. It will go to, if I turn that off, hold on. It will go also to 2500 RPM. But why have a louder cap and burn more fuel? Why have a louder cab and burn more fuel if you do not need to? Let's turn it back on. So at 1800 or 1790 RPM to 2500 RPM, uh, nothing changes other than your speed, okay? 
you just they have it set so you can't go below 18 because once you go below 18 well then your cutter bar and everything would start slowing down so yeah This unit also has a heated and cooled seat. No, it does not have a massage seat. And the seat's not bad. Straddle this swath and head over to the other side of the slough. Also, I should mention that we have a lot of moose out here. I don't think you, I can zoom in enough here. Hold on. Where'd they go? Where'd they? Right there. Okay, you see that uh, little fluff of green? You see that little speck just off to the right of it? That's one moose laying down in our uh, canola crop. Actually, correction, there is three moose out there. So, there's actually quite a few moose up here in this area, as well as elk. I've seen one herd of elk. Those are three bull moose over there. And uh, so we have a lot more different types of wildlife up here than we do back at South Farm. Now, we do have the odd moose, the odd moose back at the South Farm but not nearly this many. All right, guys, you guys kind of got this figured out. I'm just gonna shut up a little bit and you guys can do some swathing.
All right, guys. I'm gonna let you go. I think you guys kind of get the idea. We're uh, hopefully we can pick this up. Well, I don't think the weather's actually gonna cooperate for us for like another week or two. But hopefully, when all the rain is out of this month's system, so we'll see you in October, I guess. Um, we can pick these six. We can pick these suckers up. You guys have yourself an awesome one, and I will catch you guys on the flip side. Adios, amigos.